Hello, this is Jack from Teaching ESL Online. Now, this lesson is going to look at how to give online group lessons. So we're going to talk about the software you need, all the factors involved when giving these types of lessons, and also how to fill up the slots that you have available. I'm making this video because I received this question on Facebook. I've been teaching English online for two years, giving one-to-one -one lessons. I've tried many times to start giving group lessons, but it hasn't worked. My question is, how do I get students interested in group lessons? Before I answer that question directly, I just wanna go over a little bit about what a group lesson is like online, because obviously there are some differences to giving traditional lessons face-to-face in a classroom. Firstly, you'll need some good software. And I highly recommend that you try out Zoom. I'll leave a link to Zoom in the comment section below. But know that this gives the best connection, which is important when you have more than two people connecting at the same time online. You can also create breakout rooms where students can discuss certain things together in groups. You can record the lessons, you can share your screen, you can annotate while sharing your screen. There's chat. There are so many features available that make this software the best for when it comes to group lessons, but also one-to-one -one lessons too. Now, there are many benefits for a teacher and also for the student when it comes to group lessons. Now, the first one is price. Okay, so it's a better price for the student, but the teacher can also leverage their time too. Because imagine that you are given lessons at $25 an hour for one-to-one, -one, and you decide to give a group lesson where the student pays $15 an hour. So the student is paying $10 an hour less to get that time with you and also other students. And let's say that you get four people into this lesson. Well, four times 15 is 60, which means you are now getting $60 an hour instead of 25. So it allows you to leverage your time. But I also found the group lessons more enjoyable than my one-to-one -one lessons. And I think this is because there's more interaction. So students can bounce ideas off each other. You can ask one student a question and then a different student a different question. The students interact with each other too. So they have different personalities. Some people are more shy, some people are more outgoing. They have different opinions, which leads to a more fun lesson. But group lessons aren't for everybody. And here are four reasons why it is difficult to fill up the slots that you have available for the group lessons that you offer. Firstly, the student can't be flexible with timing. So you create the time slot and you say, this is when the group lessons are going to be. At eight o'clock on Mondays and Wednesdays, for example. So the student has to be available at that time frame in order to sign up for that lesson. Secondly, most teachers want to keep learners separated by levels. If your lessons are for intermediate learners, then this excludes all beginners and advanced students. Learners will also have to commit to a series of lessons, so they'll have to commit to a 10 week period. Because if you give group lessons, you'll want it to be on a consistent basis. And I recommend that you base it on how language schools do this. So maybe a semester or over a 10 week period. And that type of commitment might not be attractive to a lot of learners. And finally, a lot of learners who want lessons online are looking for that one-to-one -one practice. They want to have the teacher all to themselves. So those four reasons outline why the demand for group lessons is lower than the demand for one-to-one -one lessons. At this stage, you might be thinking, I'm just not going to bother giving these group lessons. And maybe that's a good idea. And I'm going to give you another reason why maybe you shouldn't give group lessons later. But first, let's say that you want to go ahead and give these group lessons for the reasons we talked about before. Here is how to build demand for these lessons and to fill up your slots. Firstly, it's important to get across the benefits of your lessons in all your marketing materials. 
So we talked about the fact that the student is going to be paying less per hour for your lessons, which is a great benefit. You can also outline what the learner is going to learn through these group lessons and where they're going to be at the end of the course. So this is going into all the great things about what you are offering. Also get across the benefits like the interaction, the recording of the lessons or anything else that you offer on top of just the actual lesson. So take your time to write down the benefits and to really think about what people are going to get out of these lessons. And then introduce some urgency. The urgency involves the fact that the lessons are gonna start on a certain date and people have to sign up before that date in order to reserve their space. But also, spaces are limited. So you can limit each group lesson to four students, five or six, whatever number feels right for you. But you can't take on any more learners once those spaces are full. Again, put this in your marketing materials and make sure people know when the deadline is and how many spaces are available. From there, I would create some kind of sales page or landing page so that people can actually sign up for your lessons and remove the barriers so that it's easy for people to sign up. Use something like Calendly or Sells so that you can keep things simple and so people can pay online, reserve their spot, and then everything is sorted for them. Once you have that set up, now it's time to communicate with your audience. And here is the key part. If at this stage you don't have a sizable audience, then it might not be best to offer group lessons now. What I'm talking about here is your email list, your Facebook followers, Instagram followers, YouTube subscribers. But it's better to focus on email. I always talk about email and how important this is because it's the number one way to launch something, to launch something new, to communicate with your audience. And if you don't have a sizable email list, you're going to find it difficult to sell your group lessons. That's why I said before, you might want to wait that group lessons aren't for everybody. And if you don't have a sizable audience right now, then use this as motivation to start building it today. Check out the description because I'm going to have links to articles and software and everything that you need in order to build your email list. Yes, you can sell these courses on Instagram and on YouTube, but the message is a little bit different. And again, you'll need a large following in order to achieve this. So in summary, group lessons are fantastic. I loved giving group lessons. They helped me leverage my time and just made teaching more fun, especially at a time when I felt a little bit burnt out giving one-to-one -one lessons. You're going to need to highlight the benefits of the lessons. You're going to need to market them well too. And you'll need a sizable following in order to get enough people to sign up. In the meantime, concentrate on things like one-to-one -one lessons and building your audience and know that you can put feelers out there you know if you do have a list that you think is small then put feelers out there to see if people are interested in what you are going to offer but like everything else you'll only know until people have to pay money for it okay thank you so much for watching this video again check out the description for the resources that i've mentioned in this lesson and also just for more links to help you thrive as an online teacher and if you have any questions leave them below in the comment section i will gladly answer them for you thanks again for watching and i'll speak to you soon bye, -bye.